<laughs> well, welcome to the WSL post show. It is going to be a big one. So much to talk about on a very interesting day of competition here at stop number seven on the Samsung Galaxy Championship Tour. Tahiti has lit up. We've had our best day of competition of this event window so far with 17 scores dropped in the excellent range and uh, the majority of them coming in one round four heat. We'll get to that in a moment. But uh, firstly, I want to welcome Strider Wozalewski. You did a great job out there in the channel today. Great it insight, was, Strider. Uh, it was beautiful out there. Let me tell you, it was like, I mean, you look at the sunset behind us. <laughs> this day has been nothing but fun. Uh, you know, beautiful conditions, that little offshore grooming at the end of the day with some beautiful nine-point rides in that last heat. Couldn't have been any better, I yeah. don't know. I mean, Mate, great job out there and, you know, spoiled a couple of beautiful shots of the, the scenic backdrop here, but <laughs> all in all. A fantastic job. Ross Williams is also with job. us, a, a former championship tour competitor. Ross, a, a huge, huge uh, couple of rounds of competition and some pretty interesting quarterfinal matchups uh, or quarterfinalists established, I should say. Yeah, that was a real mixed bag. We saw that with the results. And, you know, we kind of saw our heavy favorites do their thing and then tumble as well. Uh, and we saw the same thing with wind, where it didn't really want to make up its mind. It was, you know, really perfect and offshore, and then it got crumbly. Um, so in general today, it was pretty tough for the boys to compete because it was perfect if you happened to look out at the right time, and it was also uh, slow, and um, it, it was, you know, kind of stressful for the boys. That was really probably the thing that the world's best struggle with most, Strider, is the fact that we had heats where there was a flurry of excellent set waves, and then we had other exchanges where surfers just seem to sit there for an eternity begging for oh. the opportunity to ride waves. It's tough, you know, you're, you're, you're going to go through those breathing moments and she kind of gives you some and then she takes them away and uh, Mother Nature just, she wasn't just pumping today, which is something we were looking for, but we didn't get that. So a lot of wave starved heat, so to speak, but there was, those opportunities were there. You just had to be in the spot ready for them when they happened. Uh, and, and have priority, although there was a lot of action without priority today, where guys were actually making it through heats on, on those smaller waves where they were doing turns and actually getting busy on the face, which was really fun to watch as well. This is one of those days that you watch the highlight reel and you're like, oh my god, it was the all-time best event ever, but it was challenging. There was 10-15 yeah. minute lulls. I love it. I loved how, how deep some of the surfers were, were willing to put themselves in the barrel on some of those limited opportunities. You know, you sit there and you wait a long time. Your feet sometimes start to get a little <laughs> bit slippery. The nerves start to kick in, but really some composed performances. And we did see a, a perfect score drop today. We sure did. Our man, Kelly Slater, pulling it in. Uh, it was one of those waves that you, the other guys barely even looked at. Bruno just let it go. Uh, and he slipped to the inside. It was one of those West Bowls and things stood up. And he really did weave through uh, an almost unmakeable section. And for the scale that was set in the heat, it was a 10-point ride. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And that was one of those angles, Ronnie, where once you looked into it, it was like, whoa, holy smokes, what just happened? And he went over the foam ball twice. That was some Houdini stuff right We're there. We're going to get the opportunity to break down Kelly's ride a little later on. But right now, we want to hear from the winner of the last heat of the day through to the quarterfinals. And on track for a big result here in Tahiti is Julian Wilson with Pete Mel. That's right, Ronnie. And uh, what a heat it was, right? I mean, uh, how, tell us... First off, uh, that beautiful wave you got out of the gates and also Joel Parkinson right behind you. So a pair of nines to start the heat. Yeah, that was great to start the heat with a few waves. That heat before, John John uh, Kersey and Jadson's heat had nothing in it at all. Um, and it came down to some turns and I think maybe one little barrel as well. But um, yeah, we, we were even super deep at the start of that heat too. We were kind of hassling each other a bit. And um, yeah, that one popped up real south one, like a just a uh, tight little one that I was able to make it out of and got a score out of that one and then Joel's one was like one of those like really nice ones that you really want but um yeah it was a great way to start the heat and and Gabby came back into the heat as well with a nine and it was pretty much it was wide open until until the end but the last 15 minutes there was like after Gabby got his nine that was it it was just went like the heat before I guess just shut down how do you prepare for heats like that? I mean, you watch heats that have nothing, and then all of a sudden there's those heats that have great waves. I mean, how do you design yourself on what you're going to do in a heat, especially when you have three guys in the water? There's, to be honest, there's, like, there's no real pattern in the swell out there. Um, it can shut off for like 40 minutes, or it can shut off for 10 minutes, or whatever. There's no consistency to it. Um, so my, my mindset out there is just finishing whatever good opportunity I can, and um, that's basically it. If a good wave comes with like a good barrel at the start, that's great. If not, and it's overhead, I'm going to take off and make the most of it. So, Congratulations. Into the quarterfinals, Julian Wilson.
Thank you, Pete. And uh, Julian, maybe not the first guy you think about for a big result here in Tahiti, but uh, changing that with a very strong performance and a number of excellent rides today. We've got to uh, cast our mind back to the third round, Heat 6. We knew it was going to be a tough one for Matt Wilkinson. He has held that Jeep Leaders jersey for the entire season, but it is, uh, well, slipping off his back at the moment. He hasn't lost it just yet, though. Uh, yeah, he hasn't. Um, you know, we've got some work to be done here. This was unfortunate for... Uh, you know, Wilco, the waves just weren't firing. The waves weren't pumping. It really didn't get a slug fest to really battle it out in this heat. Bruno making haste of, of the conditions and catching a lot of waves under priority, and it got the job done. Yeah, I think for Bruno, you know, the difference was is he, he had a better rhythm. He stayed busy. Wilco was trying to do the patience game. We saw that actually, that was the erratic thing about today is it, it worked sometimes and sometimes, sometimes it didn't. Uh, but for Wilco, he did have one pretty good opportunity and he didn't squeeze through. Right here, you're going to see him. Uh, that was kind of the name of the game today. Small little technical barrels and uh, if you got clipped, it was kind of lights out. Right there, you can see him go over the falls. Bruno had a wave almost just as difficult, boys, and he squeezed through and it, you know, it kind of made the difference. Such a, a tough one for Matt Wilkinson. I only managed a heat score total of 1.93. But I've got to say this, I still think there's some positives for Matt Wilkinson. He's surfing very well despite the fact that he's had a couple of early round losses now. The heat just slowly ran away from me and I was happy letting him go all those fives and the one six. I was, I didn't want them with priority. There'd been enough waves all morning that uh, I kind of decided that I wasn't settling for anything but an eight or above and um, I ended up pretty much out of time and I took that one insider that was pretty long and nice and I just tripped over at the end of it and then it's pretty much over after that one there was not much left so yeah I'm, I'm disappointed Bruno's amazing out here good luck to him in the rest of the event obviously gonna be watching the next few heats pretty close but I mentioned his form despite a couple of those uh, early round losses he'll have to put that that good work he's been doing out on the open face to fantastic use I guess the concern for Matt Wilkinson is he hasn't finaled uh, quarters or better at any stop that's left on the schedule so he's really up against it in order to uh, stay in the title race but let's move on John John Florence straight up after Matt Wilkinson up against Alex Ribeiro looked really solid strider oh yeah I mean the guys I mean John John it, it was just unfortunate to see him have such a lackluster heat you know down the line even after this but beautiful <coughs> form grabbing the wall just coming through so cleanly uh, he's you know so good on the backhand and the barrel, you just you just kind of have to say it's a 90% chance he's going to make it when he takes off. And that turn right on the reef, come on, that was sick. Yeah, I, you know, what I was impressed with this heat um, is John John was, he had a very calculated, kind of slow uh, vibe to this. He, he waited patiently with his priority. And a lot of times you see John catch a ton of waves and try to get in a rhythm uh, and get a quick lead, uh, but not the case here. I think he was really being, uh, um, I think like making a, a positive effort at utilizing his priority and waiting for that quality wave. Alex Ribeiro gets his best result of the season. Knocked out in the third round though. John Florence, he got himself into that non-elimination round four uh, and is still a chance at taking the Jeep leader's jersey here in Tahiti. Yeah, I definitely think about it a little bit. You know, it's nice to, or it's just, it's cool for my side of things, for sure, to see him go down and me make it. Um, but at the same time, I'm just focusing on just a, this event, and you know, the world title is still pretty far away. And it's definitely my goal in my whole entire life is heading towards that. But I just want to just go event by event, and you know, we're in the second half of the year now, and some really fun events coming up. We saw less of the, the underdogs prevailing today, but in, in some very crucial heats, uh, they dropped the ball a little bit. That was the case in heat 12 of round three when we saw Gabriel Medina hit the lineup against, against Kai Otten. We knew it was going to be a tough heat for Gabe, but Kai really gave it to him when uh, he, he didn't get his positioning right and, and threw the best score Gabriel's way. Yeah, this was, uh, I couldn't believe he let the wave go. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, you don't think that a guy like a vet, you know, Kai Otten, who's been in the game for so long, is going to give any space out there to this kid uh, who's just dangerous on every single wave he catches. But look at how good 
Gabriel Surfin, he's just on on point, on you know, fire and beautiful conditions out there. Like you said, Ross, the highlight reel, it just looks like the best day ever. Yeah, I think for, for Kai Otten, obviously he's not afraid to send it at Chopu. I really think if the waves were eight to 10 feet today and, and sketchy, he might've had a better chance against Gabriel because he just would have simply waited for a big scary uh, purple wave to come at him and huck himself. But uh, instead, when it comes down to that more of a, a tactical effort and you gotta be sharp, Every now and then, one of those waves can slip underneath you, and that's what happened to Kai. Medina just looking uh, very comfortable, super sharp, like John John. Not the highest heat score total of the round, but enough to get the win and uh, get himself into a position to have a couple of chances. Let's check out that Jeep leaderboard, because uh, the top 10 surfers have been dropping like flies. Matt Wilkinson was the first to go. Uh, Adriano actually fell out of the drawer in the second round. Mick's not here. Uh, Italo's out. Michelle, Seabass, there's so much room to move now. Just outside the top 10, you've still got Adrian Bucking alive in the mix. He's going to be moving on up, and uh, it's going to get very interesting when we get the rest of this contest underway tomorrow. Yeah, it's big time. Uh, and so it's pretty much, uh, I mean, I know the door's wide open for a few of the guys uh, besides the top three, but it, in my eyes, it really is a three-headed monster for that title. Those guys are going to be battling each and every event all the way through. Well, you look at Wilco's chances at lowers, and, you, you know, you said he hasn't had a very good finish there, uh, you know, in the past, but he hasn't had a good finish at, at in Fiji or you know, in any other places like that. He's just kind of on a, on a roll. So if he could show up there, you know, go through the roof on the backhand, and I do think he's going to lose the jersey here. I think that either Gabriel or John John are going to advance through. They do have work to do. they got some space and some, some ground to cover. But going into the, the next event, it's going to be a really good battle out of lowers. Well, we had uh, one of the heats of the year earlier today. We're going to have a very close look at it right after the break. Stay with us. You're watching the post show. It's definitely one of the most picturesque places you can ever come in the world and obviously an amazing wave that we get to compete on. The way it comes in and bends and it breaks with kind of such power and force. When you are standing in one of those barrels and you get shot out into the channel with a spear, there's not many better feelings than surfing. Every year to come back and surf against the world's best at arguably you know, the world's most famous and intimidating wave is something pretty special.
Well, we did have a spectacular day of competition. We saw some lower seeds going up against some more fancy competitors, and as a result, some very interesting celebrations. Keanu Singh flexing hard after his round three heat. Daddy baby let out a hoot in the barrel right there, and that was uh, one for his pops. Happy birthday. Good Rubbing birthday. the belly, he was hungry for the win. Is that what we clarified? He was hungry with that statement? Yeah. And, and Keanu was definitely angry with his claim. That was solid. This was uh, the natural one, boys. That's the organic one where you just can't help yourself. Yeah, well, up against Jeremy Flores, a former event winner here. Julian was pumped to get through that one. And then Kaloe and Dino, who rarely claims these days, just couldn't help himself with this one in the dying stages of his round four heat against Geordie Smith. And Keanu was seeing he got the job done. And he was obviously super psyched. So looking at round five now, just the way the results panned out, pretty interesting. I, I think the first heat was sort of how I, I saw it falling. I thought Kolohe's experience here is the only surfer in that one to make the quarters previously, had a good chance. But uh, it made things interesting for Geordie Smith and Keanu, who are now going to uh, meet Adrian Buchan and Kelly Slater, respectively, in round five. Any predictions there on, on what's going to unfold? Yeah, I hope Ace, the surgeon, is going to uh, go to work, and I think uh, Kelly is going to do his magic as well, personally. Yeah, I think Kelly, Kelly and uh, Ace, definitely the favorites in those heats. Um, and uh, all the way down, we got some interesting matchups, Ronnie. Well, at bottom half, there's a pretty solid one, too. The, the indicators are there for Kelly Slater, for sure. He had a 10-point ride in, in a heat where he finished second. Bottom half of the draw, interesting how it all worked out. Jadson Andre is going to be up against Gabriel Medina. He could have, uh, if he got a, a good second score, gone up against John Florence in the last heat of round five. And that probably would have worked pretty nicely in his favour if you think about stalling your rival's momentum with a big performance in the event. That would have been great to see the, the rematch from last year, but now we're going to see, you know, Andre against Medina and then Parkinson against Florence. Are you kidding me? That is just going to be so fun to watch those guys battle it out on their backhand. Um, you know, you picking one? Uh, I think I think John John's gonna take out Joel, but Joel's been solid this entire event. Uh, and that heat, Julian, Joel, and Gabby was uh, was really solid. That was so much fun. Every one every one of those guys served at such a high level, so pretty tough. It's not too often you're looking at the fifth round and thinking that that's where the the winner might be coming from to win this contest. But it, it kind of feels that that way for me. I, I know that the guys that have moved through the quarterfinals already have been surfing very well, but there's just so much talent yeah. in that fifth round. Well, an extra heat never hurt anybody out here. It's so beautiful, so perfect. This wave is just amazing to surf. So those guys are almost happy to surf another round out there. I do think that John John's a little like, oh, man, I just almost had this jersey in my hands. And he doesn't. Not yet. So <laughs> we'll see if he does it's get be, that yeah. next heat. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be intense. We're expecting great waves for the final day of competition. Don't forget, we'll be making uh, an early appearance for Dawn Patrol 6.30 for a possible 6.35 start. Don't miss that. Right now, though, we're going to leave you with some spectacular highlights for what was a magic day. And happy birthday, Joe Tappel. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League. Welcome back to the Billabong Pro Tahiti. We've got the third round underway. There is so many big heats coming your way. Kill would be killed. I'm coming out as hard as I can. I'm not going to let these guys just take my money and take my job.
causing headaches for the world's best. Matty has to make this wave and break combination. But he is going to fall and go over the falls. Matt Wilkinson just devastated with the result. Well, 45 seconds to go. Julian Wilson needs an excellent number here. And he'll find his way out. Medina now pulls in quickly into the barrel. Nice and deep. Well, there is 30 seconds to go, and Andino looking very good here at the moment. Wow. Kelly Slater still gunning through this one, and the score has dropped. It's a 10-point ride for the 11-time world champion. Well, here's Bruno. He gets a 9.3. Kelly Slater back in second now. Wow. Julian Wilson swings on the first wave. He makes it. Wow.